Well, no doubt that team at this point up to Missouri Western's history is the best team in their history. The 2012 Missouri Western football team sits in rarefied air, accomplishing so much that season that's never been done before or since then. And that's why they took their rightful place in the Griffins Hall of Fame over the weekend. We had, through a stretch, we had beaten the last three national champions in that five-game game stretch. Okay, these guys are special young men. The 2012 squad, arguably one of, if not the best team in the Griffins' 50-plus years of football, was a sight to behold. Jerry and that staff built them as freshmen and, and built them built them all the way up into seniors that year. And there were some young guys too, but it was really a senior-heavy leadership class that I think it just hit at that time. That group right there is part of the reason why I wanted to be a Griffin in the first place. The Griffins winning an MIAA championship, making it to the Division II quarterfinals, a run that then head coach Jerry Partridge knew would land this group in the Hall of Fame one day. I told the kids afterwards, I said, you guys stamped it. You're going to be 10 years from now or so, you're going to come back as a Hall of Fame football mm -hmm. team. It's a unique, fun coincidence. The induction comes 10 years since this incredible team bulldozed its way through the MIAA. Travis Partridge, reverse play action fake. Mike Hill all alone, and he has a 48-yard touchdown. You never really had to, like, squeeze effort out of people. You show up to practice, you did your job, because that's what you were supposed to do, and then you went one on Saturday, and then you just did it again. With one exception, though, an unlikely, perhaps season derailing loss to Missouri Southern on homecoming. I remember just trying to get guys to the press conference for interviews, and, and you had you know, your team leaders, Michael Hill, Travis Partridge, that were almost inconsolable. I mean, they were in tears after that loss, because that's how much it meant. Um, you know, those guys cared a lot. The loss to the Lions put the Griffins in a tough spot, sitting at 6-1, and one, heading to then number 7 Pittsburgh State. But what happened next showed the kind of guys this team had. Kind of woke everybody up. And sometimes winning kind of masks problems. Your attention to detail sometimes can be really heightened when, when you lose a game. You know, it's, 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 it's better to make corrections after, after wins but it's easier to make corrections after losses. Pittsburgh going down 7 nothing in the first series, you know, they turned it and, and those kids turned it. Handed the Gorillas their, their worst loss in 93 years at home. Missouri Western blew out Pittsburgh State 63-14 in the jungle, setting up a run of beating four ranked conference opponents, including a conference championship up in Maryville. So we stormed the field at Northwest. My mom wouldn't let me storm. In a drag them out, knock them out brawl, the Griffins trying to take down the fourth ranked Bearcats, with it coming down to a play made by Travis Partridge, the Savannah, Missouri native and one of the best QBs in Missouri Western history, scoring the go ahead touchdown with 107 to go. We're tied at 20, extra point pending. Taylor Anderson's school record, 66 PAT is good. Griff's up 21 20. It was a bust, actually. Um, it, that defensive end should have been blocked by. Alec and, and Mike always accused me of pulling it when I shouldn't have, um, but I guess he was happy for me on that one that I pulled it when I shouldn't have, because uh, I sh shouldn't really have been reading the C-gap. After being down 17 nothing at the half, Missouri Western fought their way back, and that goes back to the kind of guys on this team. For example, a St. Joe native, Ben Peaster, who some call the heart and soul of this group. I don't know, pleasing or ironic or just shocking thing is to watch Ben Peaster walk, walk up here with a child. The Griffins, led by running back Michael Hill and Partridge on offense, just to name a few, had to face off against another top 10 team in the first round of the playoffs, hosting Minnesota Duluth. A three overtime thriller, 57 55, coming down to the Griffins' defense making a stand, and maybe another prophetic moment from Coach Partridge leading up to the game. I read in the newspaper just trying to find out some stuff, and they had a quote from Coach Partridge, and they said, How would you expect to stop their quarterback? He said, I don't know, maybe he'll trip and fall or something and that happened to win us the football game. Sure enough, the magical run for the Griffins continued, rolling over Henderson State to advance to the quarterfinals and traveling to play Minnesota Mankato. The Mavericks bested the Griffins 17-10 to in to the Missouri Western season, but what a season it was. Best team I've been, been on by far, um, and I'll go ahead and say that on all levels, and I think that's more so because of the bond and just, you know, we, we really wanted it together. We wanted to do it as a unit. It's been 10 years since these guys all took the field together, and a lot has changed for each and every one of them. New coaching jobs, new families, but what unites them all to this day, that 2012 season. Built on 71 players from the state of Missouri, 
a lot of them coming from Northwest Missouri, Kansas City, or the St. Louis area. That team had, I believe, five first-team all-conference guys. Four of them were within King City radius of St. Joe. You know, we had Macon Allen from King City. Uh, of course, Travis grew up in my home. And then Michael and Benny were St. Joe kids. And the only kid that wasn't from the immediate area was, was David Bass, who was a St. Louis kid. He's a Missouri kid. Those local St. Joseph connections, more than anything, help make Missouri Western and the football team even more of being St. Joseph's school and team. Well, this area was so wrapped in green. You know, it gave them a, a really nice team to, to really root for that was had an opportunity to really go out and dominate a team uh, every every Saturday. I think really more than anything what that group did um, in that time was it really in a way changed a perspective or a reputation of what m many people in the community thought Missouri Western was. It was such a fun year and those guys were so unified on the field and they played for one another and that's what a good team is all about and this is one of the best ever to play at Missouri Western. With their enshrinement into the Hall of Fame done, it's been important to look back on what was perhaps the greatest story and football team ever witnessed at Missouri Western. Started with the bond between the players uh, amongst e each other, and then also the coaching staff and the players. And you know, that's all we needed. I think that program in that year brought more pride uh, to that university uh, than we've seen in its 50 plus years of existence. And they did it all on the football field. Um, and that was special. Jerry's a Hall of Famer and, you know, that's his team. He won, he built that team and that's his, his team. I, I, I believe in that and believe in Jerry as a coach. You're a Hall of Famer, you know I mean? My team is in the Hall of Fame, you know, so um, I think it's, I think that's big. Again, guys, thank, thank you for how good you made us look. Thank you for coming back and continue to come back. And again, I'm going to say something I haven't said that in six years. Go Grips. Chris Roush, KQG Sports.